Coach, thanks for being here. Um, you know, for me, this is really exciting. Like we talked about before, I think, you know, you're, when I first started coaching and, and seriously trying to, you know, not just, not just use what I had learned in my playing experience, but when I started to look, try and learn about more, you know, system-based things and, and how can we not just what we run, but how can we organize what we run in a better way? Um, what is open actually was the first um, book I read and I've kind of worked my way through your other stuff as well. Um, and I know you've got uh, a new book out more recently, I think in 2021, Capology as well. Um, but if you want to just kind of give anyone who might, you know, not be familiar with your work, kind of a, a brief, you know, bio and, and, and where people can find your stuff. And then we'll dive right into, you know, what is the R4 system? Yeah, thanks uh, for having me on, Jackson. It's a pleasure to meet you and be on here. Uh, to everybody who's listening, I'm Doug Maddox. I'm the offense coordinator and quarterback coach at Tulsa Union High School. Uh, I've been uh, – coaching, I think in my 22nd year. So, so it been a while. And um, this, this system was built out of my failures as a coach and kind of my needs that I needed when I was a young coach starting out. And, and I don't know how you guys felt if you can put, put yourself in that position or if you are in that position. Um, but for me, I felt like this, I was completely overwhelmed. And, and, uh, and, and you've seen this picture of Coach Belichick, one of the greatest ever in the game. And this was uh, during that COVID year. And obviously he was, he was worn smooth but I can relate to this picture and to all these plays on the board into these big giant playbooks because I was trying to consume as much information as possible and I had no way to compartmentalize make sense out of it coaches were using a language that was entirely foreign to me they were speaking uh, double eagle tight under over shade five nine all these different names and numbers and code words and acronyms and it, it didn't make any sense to me. And I was afraid to ask. I didn't want to feel stupid. And so I spent the first five years of my coaching career trying to piece together um, the patterns on my own. And what I really needed at that point was an operating system. And so as I got earlier, uh, later, later into my coaching career, um, we started looking outside of football to find answers. Because as I asked expert coaches that were way better than me, what I found is there was a disconnect and they really didn't have a process or a system or a language to easily distill all the information they had learned over their 20, 25 years of coaching experience down to a novice like me. And so that's really where the gap is, I feel, in the football world is there's this giant chasm and we're trying to fill it with, with these plays, but we really have no process to make sense of it all. And so we're just stumbling along blindly trying to figure it out. And, and so what, what I found was is when you get stuck uh, in trying to find out answers to these these questions that are troubling everyone, you got to go outside your domain. And, and so we went outside the domain of football. We started looking at uh, military. Um, we started looking at firefighters. We started looking at race car drivers. Basically, any industry that had people that had to perform under pressure, I wanted to model what made them great. And so what you started to see was patterns started to, to come out. So, for example, um, with, with, special for, with special forces like um, the, the snipers and, and Navy SEALs, um, they would go into areas and have to overtake rooms of space under constrained time. So it's like the quarterback, right? He, he's got to go into this, this uh, tight space. He's got to read the reality, what he sees when he breaches the door. What he sees pre-snap is not what he's going to see post-snap. And he has to make decisions based on threats. And so they have years and years of experience in data and in a process to teach CQB guys, teach special forces how to thrive in those moments. That's what I needed as a coach, and that's what my quarterback needed. So we extracted those principles and we applied them to football. Same thing with uh, fighter pilots, firefighters. What we found the patterns were is that you have to understand the non-negotiables that matter most. You can't worry about everything. And so we found compartments to place information in. We found ways to identify what matters most. We found ways to organize it and see patterns and put it together in a common language where we could teach a novice, a, a freshman football player, a sophomore football player, and accelerate his growth to by the time he's a senior, he could go coach and be just as good as one of us. So that's kind of how R4 started. And that's what R4 is. It's an operating system that allows you to accelerate decision makings under pressure as it relates to the game of football. So it's a football operating system. Many people think R4 is an offense. It, it can overlay over any offense and it allows you to run it faster, better, and, and way more effective than you ever thought possible because it can work with anything. So how do, how do we start here? And I'm going to give you just a, an example of how it started and kind of um, where this grew into. Anytime you're looking at football, if you want to become an expert in football, so that's my goal is I want to build experts. I want to become an expert. So how do I take all this knowledge and distill it to you, the listener, 
and, and get you on to a level of an expert seasoned coach? Well, you have to understand the boundaries of football. And so the boundaries uh, create the canvas that you're painting on, essentially. So if you don't understand boundaries and how to work within them and how to manipulate them, then you're going to be lost. And so there's three boundaries in football. You've got space, you've got time, and you've got talent. And so we have to be able to understand how to manipulate those and how to manage those. And if we can do that, we can make better decisions faster. What R4 does is it links all those three realms together, and and that's the environment that the game is played within. So we need a language that codes for each of these. We need visual cues that code for each of these. And we need to make sure our plays can create space under time and talent constraints. So again, those all work together. So this is how really R4 started for me. I was a coach and the, one of the first plays that was taught to me was the shallow dig concept. Okay, many of you guys, air raid teams, you may run this. Well, 15, 20 years ago, this is how this concept was taught. The post was was called a peak uh, pre-snap read. So you taught your quarterback, hey, peak at that post pre-snap. If you like it, take it, or if there's grass, you take it, right? Okay, so that's how I taught my quarterback. And then post-snap, we would look at the dig route, and if and, and everything was based on the read of the wheel linebacker, or if you run it to this, the field, it would be the strong side Sam linebacker. All right, if that wheel blitz, we would break that dig off hot. So our, our progression was peak, and then we'd go hot, and then after we looked at the hot route, if, if the hot route didn't materialize because he didn't blitz, We would still stay locked onto the wheel. We would read the dig space. If the wheel drops and walls the dig, then we would would rush the shallow right here and read the shallow space. If that wasn't there, then we progress on out to the the comeback or the flat as a check down. So it was a pure progression read, um, kind of right to left, starting top down. Well, what I found was is that anytime I taught my quarterback to lock on a single defender key, he got tunnel vision. And if that defender didn't do what I taught him, my quarterback would lock up. So again, if that defender didn't drop to wall, right, or he didn't jump the shallow immediately, um, my quarterback struggled. As long as he did the two things that I thought he was going to do, we had success. And so what I started building was more if-then statements to teach my quarterback, well, if he does um, this, then we do this. If he blitzes, then we do this. If the safety rotates down, then we do this. Oh, by the way, if that corner plays inside leverage, then we'll do this. And I overloaded my quarterback with 20, 25 if thens, and he was a shell of himself. And so I needed a way to find out how do you teach quarterbacks how to make better decisions under pressure, but still get all the answers you want. So we had to go back to space, time, and talent. What I first needed was the ability to evaluate vertical space. So what we created was what we call the hard deck. All right. So this is like the genesis of our four. The hard deck is a line that starts at seven yards from the line of scrimmage. And it easily allows us to process process vertical space from flat space. And so once that hard deck line was framed out for my quarterback, he could better gauge of when that corner and safety are below it. Now the space above it is what we call uncapped. That's the word we use for open. All right. So the hard deck was a valuable tool. Now what we use in the game is we have an umpire in American football and he is, he stands around seven to eight yards. So we just scan above that and that allows us to gauge vertical opportunity. All right. So what that did is that allowed us to bring what we call this rhythm route online. The next thing we did with our fours, we started to group routes by DNA. We, we found that routes had DNA in them. And what that means by is route breaks, how they're designed and the depth that they break at will fit into certain families. So what we found was is there are certain routes that break between five and seven steps that attack vertical. Those are called rhythm routes. That means they can be hit at 1.8 seconds on the drop, the last step of a drop. So if we're a shotgun quarterback, we catch the ball and take a standard three or punch three step drop, our last step of our drop is gonna hit about 1.8 seconds. So any route that breaks at 1.8 and and maintains his speed is called a rhythm route. So that was the first category of routes. That allows me to compartmentalize an entire play and know where I need to look at first, right? Because the goal is, is to like CQB, when they enter into a room, they, they have to get as many guys through the door as possible in the, the least amount of time to overtake that space. That's what I want to do with my receivers. So here's all my special forces, guys. I've got to flood an area of space, but me, the quarterback, the guy with the gun, I have to see each quadrant of space and know what best space is to attack or from a CQB world, know where to see the hostage and to see the op for and take them out. So again, we have to time it up with the timeline. So we look at rhythm route space first, 
And so any route that has a rhythm property, that's our first route in the progression. Okay, what we found next was that read routes take a little bit longer to develop. So they're gonna break open at 2.2 to 2.4. All right, that's equal to one or two hitches up in the pocket. All right, so if I take a three-step drop and hitch up once, I'm gonna be at 2.2. Well, there's certain styles of routes that break open in 2.2 seconds, and they're called read routes. There are any route that breaks over the hard deck line that decelerates or it's a double move, okay? So like a comeback and a dig, they decelerate foot fire, and then they break across and they break over 10 yards. So that's going to be a read route property. So those are going to be looked at second, okay, in a scan. So in this case, I would teach my quarterback to rhythm the post, read the dig on the reset, and then rush routes are the third family of routes. Rush routes break open at any point in the timeline. They're your hot routes that break under five yards. So a shallow would be example for a rush route, a shoot route, a hitch, a slant, anything that breaks under five yards would be a rush route by principle. Rush routes are universal in their time timing to become open. They can be open at any point. So rush routes can be thrown as a hot or a check down. So what, I, what I've just done with R4 is I've built, okay, a three route progression that my quarterback will now sink his eyes with his feet and he'll be looking and throwing that route at each break point as it becomes open. And so what it does, it allows us to maximize the stretch and spacing on defenders. We're not looking at space too early or taking defenders to space that we're looking at and allows us a tool, a language structure to teach progressions and understand the why behind what we're looking at. And so once our quarterbacks understood route break families in the DNA of routes and the timing of routes, they were able to now to manipulate their progressions, but still always be in the right space at the right time with the break. So for example, my quarterback could rhythm the post, then he could reset over to the backside comeback, and then he could reset over and rush the shoot route. So he could rhythm the post, read the comeback and rush the shoot, all right? Then he could go a step further. I mean, this is advanced stuff. So once you layer the information and you, you, they understand the building blocks, the DNA, and you build a common language, now you can do extraordinary things like do multiple progressions on one play, do full field reads either way. Um, that's what you're allowed to do. We, we've done this with 15, 16 year olds. So, so for example, rush routes, they have universal properties. They can break open at any point in the timeline. So my quarterback could essentially rhythm the shallow, read the dig, and then rush the backside shoot as a check down. So he could get a triangle spacing read on the same play, right? And so that's what you're able to do with R4. It's a language structure that identifies the non-negotiables. The non-negotiables in this case are route break timing and syncing that with quarterback footwork timing. And once you understand that and put a common language with it, now you can do very difficult things that are real simple because they understand the property. So that was kind of the genesis of R4. It started out as a quarterback progression reading system for pass plays. But what I found is as a play caller, when I became the play caller, I essentially had to do what the quarterback does on a pass play when he drops back and has to read defensive movement and he has to decide the best place to go. I have to do that as a play caller every play. I have to anticipate what the defensive front and coverage is or the blitz is. I have to then call the best play that would attack that. Then I have to evaluate very quickly in two to three seconds if that play was successful, why was it successful, why wasn't it, and then what the next best adjustment is. So I have to do what he does post-snap on a pass play every play. So I needed the process that we taught our quarterback to make better decisions for me, the play caller, and I needed help. I needed the help of all my coaches and assistants around me to see space the same, to understand the, the scheme strategies the same. And that was where I came into the next roadblock. How do I teach this? Well, we just used the process for R4 for progression-based reading, and we put it in for game planning, play calling, run game, and pass game. So that's kind of where we're at um, at this point in 2022. R4 is really an operating system that accelerates decision-making for everything, pattern reading, run game, pass game, game planning, play calling. Any questions on that, Coach, that we that we got? So hopefully that was a decent enough explanation of the genesis of R4. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, the, the part that resonated with, with me right away is, you know, when you're a young coach, there is so much information. And one of the things that I always struggled with was this is all great, but it's not what I know or what I have, you know, my passion drives me to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. You know, my athletes, right, they have other stuff going on 
in their life, we need to facilitate a way that we can communicate this to them in a finite number of hours. And I think that, you know, that's to me, and as a, someone who's a teacher by trade, right, that's what separates this, you know, system. And you, you brought it up. And I think for someone that might be new to this, they might have missed this. This isn't like an offense. This isn't, hey, these are dubs, 15 plays that you're sure going to do really well with because we've been successful at Union High School or wherever else. This is a way that you can take whatever it is your offense is, whatever makes you successful, whatever matches your players and just communicate the information that your athletes need to know in a real time, effective way. Um, and then, you know, to see now building it into the game planning process. So it's not just a way, to, you know, like you mentioned there to categorize, for example, the routes within a concept, you know, now you've gotten into actually taking that to the game planning context and saying, Hey, you know, how does, how does the way we talk about, you know, X, Y, and Z from a conceptual standpoint relate to now the bigger picture of, not just what is in our offensive playbook, but how, what are we going to use in certain situations and how does that match up with the way we teach it? So it's, it's great stuff. Coach Ma makes, makes a ton of sense and, you know, excited to kind of get into the next aspect of it here. Yeah. Yeah. So next thing we talk about is just what's new in the world of R4. So at um, last May uh, released uh, the book called Capology here. And so Capology is, is the language and lens of leverage. From an offensive perspective, football is about creating and owning space. Defense is about constricting and confining space. So that's where the game is won and lost. And so really, it, leverage is, is we're fighting for leverage. Well, how do I communicate the schemes and, and what I'm seeing in terms of leverage? Because a quarterback has to be able to process all those different positions and patterns and anticipate space coming open before it actually comes open. So the question you see up here is what is open? Well, it's not what is open as you see it now. It's how do you know what is going to be open? It's the anticipation that makes a great coach or a great quarterback who he is. And so there's patterns that you can see, but how do we get one to see space the same? It's all about the language we use. And so I wrote, wrote, wrote a whole book on that, and that's Capology. It's, it's basically the language of R4. And in the science of language is fascinating. So, so basically with language, the language portion of your brain is in the front part, prefrontal cortex. That's uh, called system two for, for a lot of people that understand um, the study of the brain. And then system one is the vision portion of the brain. That, that's, that's the real fast um, reactive brain the, the, without thinking. System two is, is the, the real analytical brain. This is all the book knowledge of, of football. This is all the plays and all the, the, the defensive schemes and everything you're thinking about. And this is just reacting. It's the feel. It's what with what you see. So there's a big giant chasm between these two schools of the brain. And so what we need is need to build a bridge that connects that chasm and allows us to see things and predict things happening before they happen. It's called rapid cognition. And so the language we use is critical to that. And we have to tie that language into knowing what to look for. And so that's what capology is about. So what we do here is I use a quick story. Um, native tribes have specific languages that allow them to see things that many other people can't. So for example, if you look at all these green squares, there's a tribe in Africa called the Hemba tribe. They have a elaborate language structure for the color green because green is very important in their domain and their environment. Well, let's say this is our quarterback and green represents open. So I said, hey, I want you to throw to the open square. Well, he thinks everything's open. That's how my quarterback thinks. If I call the post play, he thinks the post is open every time, right? And so I have to get him to see the reality of the, of the space of the post and get him to perceive that space the same as me. Well, what the Himba do to get that, to see the little details that truly reveal if something is open or if something is, is a critical, or cri it's a very important part of green, is they, they can see that this square right here is different than the rest. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but all those green squares look the same to me. But to a Himba tribe, they see that as something different, and that is actually a lighter shade than the other ones. So that's what I want to be able to do as a coach. And I want to get my players is I want them to get to see the hidden space that other people can't see. I want them to anticipate space becoming open that, that other people can't see until it's too late. So how do I do that? Well, I have to have a language structure that's so dialed into the details of defensive leverage that it, it communicates their brain and triggers their brain and their eyes to pick those things up faster. That's, that's the connectatory bridge that is built when you have a common language that's identified the critical non-negotiables that matter most. So that's what capology does. It essentially allows you to communicate the details so, so fine 
of what open actually is or what it's going to look like that you can pick this hidden space out before before others can see it.